everybody it's christian buckley doing another mvp buzz chat and i'm talking today with cass hey hello hi hi christian hi how are you i'm doing well and for folks that don't know you who are you where are you and what do you do right so i'm cass hi everyone and the people really know me by cass that's easy to remember my full name is way more complicated because i'm polish so our names can get pretty difficult okay so I'm Polish. Uh, I actually am based in Germany, though, very close to the Dutch border, um, pretty much like middle and north of Germany here. Um, MVP since, uh, let me check, uh, a week. <laughs> so that's, that's Long time news. ago, old timer already. Yep. So that's news. Uh, however, uh, to be honest with you, I work with the community since years now and uh, the whole let's say passion in my professional career has been very closely working. I, I've been very closely working with M365 for like a decade now. So so even if I'm an MVP for, for just a week, uh, I still have a, quite a lot of experience behind my back in that space. Yeah. Um, it, so I would it's say- It's amazing how much, the, how time flies by and we look at the, the stuff that's going time. on. I was, I was saying to somebody yesterday talking about Microsoft, I realized like that was almost 20 years ago. It was over 19 years ago that what I was, the experience I was sharing, I'm like, I can't believe it's been that long. And it was a SharePoint yeah. related story. Yeah. Yeah. You know, if, if you think about like um, terms like depots or something like you, you, you it, it was just like yesterday and now it wasn't, yeah. it was like years ago. So I totally get that. I totally get that. We have to be careful. We use those acronyms that, that have been gone for a long time and no one will know what we're talking about. Um, yeah. Cause I actually was a member of the MMS team before we became the BPOS team. So and then got for folks yeah. that don't know, then that got rebranded as Office 365. Mm. So at the beginning, of I that. I remember when I joined a fairly a, quite a quite a um, bigger ISV company. Let's let's say that, and there was a very experienced uh, colleague of mine, and he was uh, like one of the original Exchange Rangers, and like people had yeah. no idea what that means. Like, well, what's the even origins? And that was like sitting uh, nearly as near the fireplace <laughs> Christmas scenario. So it's, 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 and like he's like explaining the the origins you know <laughs> that's yeah. so funny it's it's um, cool about that the, that whole era too with some of those programs and yeah so we're again dropping lingo people don't know about the 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 rangers program um but you know as members of my team at microsoft mm -hmm. um helped to build the courseware and taught a bunch of those courses and and so i got to meet as some of those people microsoft people and then and then the the whole uh what was the 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 uh what was it the uh um what was the the it was it MCA program or whatever? Anyway, the um, you know, so you had kind of that Rangers level for external people around mm -hmm. you know deep diving the technology. I mean, all of that stuff was going in uh, around my team was doing a lot of those pieces. So I got to meet a bunch of those people, Microsoft people as well as yeah. big names, the old timers in the programs coming through there. It's and it's incredible to go and look and see where a lot of those people are still very involved in the community yeah. and doing what they're doing. I am honestly, I have, I think it's a lot of people that are struggling with it. Like I have sometimes this like waves hitting me of imposter syndrome, like thinking, oh my God, like I'm here today. Like what's happening? Like I know, remember, I remember 10 years ago, my whole story was pretty much an accident that I started uh, doing anything with Microsoft. It was a pure accident because I'm a clinical psychologist by uh, by trade. Okay, completely. Well, we need more people like you in the community <laughs> to help us understand why we're here. <laughs> what think, makes us yeah. tick? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think what makes us think. I, I was thinking about it when I got invitation from you, and and not only, but there's few few, few things that made me start thinking. Like, what makes us tick? For me personally, I think it's the passion to, um, or like the excitement when you when you have when you see people grow. Or it, um, I used to be a, a trainer as well. That's how I actually mm -hmm. started with the whole office back then. Office three sixty five straight after after a repost. Um, I used to be a trainer, and so like it it made me so um, 
happy to see the technology being applied to really business problems and people starting to understand the technology and starting to get grasp of very difficult, complex um, concepts in a way, right? Yeah. Um, but then on the end of the day, I was in a conference, I think two years ago, um, Dusseldorf, uh, European Collaboration Summit, two yeah. years ago, yeah. I think. Yeah. I met two of my former trainees. I haven't seen them for like, years okay and now they're like top consultants you know earning so much money and they're like super happy and they're like oh my god like you inspired us you you trained us and we we are here just because of you and like that was the best feeling ever you know and i have the same after each uh, i don't know conference if i have a, have a speaking session or something if at least one person gets something out of it my job is done like this is this is this is like a bond to my heart now. <laughs> yeah, I, I just was just thinking here. Um, I think that there's a good reason to have uh, like the uh, a tips app on your phone when people like say like it, it was so great and you inspired me to do this. It's like oh, oh and just hold up the app <laughs> with the, the tips, you know. <laughs> yeah. No, it, you know it, it's. I think it exists uh, it, actually. Because I think it's a, I mean, that's the key to becoming an MVP. It's like people that are actively sharing. It's part of our DNA. It's, it's, it's sharing. Right. It's, it's sharing, yeah. building the community, sharing with the community. And, and we would do it regardless of mm -hmm. the MVP title or not. It's just what we do, it's who we are. Exactly. And I think there is a, some people, I don't want to generalize, but I think there is a miscon misconception that when you're an MVP, you are like, I know everything. Bullshit. Like you don't have to know everything. Like you, you some just who have think to. they do, and unfortunately, it, they get humbled often. So yeah. In Microsoft ecosystem, it's it's simply impossible. Like it, it doesn't matter how many years you spend on it, it's impossible to know everything. Even yeah. in your one industry, even if it comes down to sixty five, I don't know so many things. I know some things great, some things not at all. But at the same time, there is this um kind of sense of belonging and like you are not afraid to say I don't know these things or I know these things or I have a friend I can ask my friend from community maybe he or she can help you know that's that's a part of uh, I think personality that we all have that is right. similar between us here in a community I, not that I, I can agree. say that <laughs> and there's well and there are I mean as you were we were talking chatting before we got started here uh, you know that you know this is it, it's an award for what you did the previous year technically you don't have to do anything more like if you no. switch jobs or careers or said you know like like i'm gonna retire and be done um and I actually know a couple retired mvps retired Same. from their day jobs but they're still very active in the community this is this is the part that, that they love um and, and which is which is all just fine um but you you need to that's why i say that it's part of our, our dna like we're doing this regardless now, when I think of like, I'm not the retiring type, like I'll be working somewhere doing something. <laughs> uh, I'm just not a fan of, you know, idle hands sitting around, uh, you know, doing things like I will schedule mm -hmm. myself until I'm gone from, from this, uh, this world. <laughs> um, but the, with, with so much of that, there's so much uh, opportunity. You don't know where it's going to go. I was going to make the comment earlier is like, like changing jobs, uh, and it's so common now. I mean, it's gone are the days. It's rare when you have somebody who is like, I've been working for this company for 30 plus years. I have a good friend, Tom Duff. Like he's been with this company 31 years. Like that is so rare to see now. It is. Um, yeah. But, but I'm like, my career is around like this aspect of the things that I'm doing, the community that like, gets built into my career. Yeah. And so it, it, it's, uh, and, and that then affords so many different opportunities that I would never get mm -hmm. if I were in a single job with a single employer. Yeah, totally agree. So uh, I don't even, I stopped counting like how many different titles, positions, roles I had in the past, you know, a uh, decade plus. I stopped, I've stopped looking at that, but I know that every, everything I ever did somehow was connected to that m365 or microsoft uh, work or community or whatever i actually found so i am now working at a startup okay <laughs> working at a startup it's a marketing tech uh, not very connected with the microsoft uh, world you would say um but funny thing is that i actually met one of the co-founders and uh, now the cto of a startup at the conference uh, at the espc uh, back in uh, december i think it was uh, I don't remember. Anyway, um, it's not Microsoft world, but it kind of is because, you know, at the back of uh, at the back end, 
our application runs on Azure OpenAI, we still have to have some sort of knowledge. We still have to, we are still leveraging the context. We are still um, educating ourselves every day. We are uh, learning every day, but at the end of the day, we are also sharing that passion on our personal blogs, on the conferences. We are now going together on a different conference, talking about this experience. So even if, you know, my MVP award was for that very niche, narrow, I mean, not very niche, but <laughs> in the whole yeah. ecosystem, one category, it doesn't mean that this is, this is, this is just this that this defines me or the last 10 years or where I'm going or my next role or whatever. Right. So I couldn't agree more. Yeah. So what, what would you say, I mean, given, given your background, uh, ignoring your current <laughs> focus, which is a little bit different, but what, what are the technologies that you're most passionate about? What are you, what are you talking to people? What are you excited sure. to go and teach on um, to talk on? Right. So, um, we actually have the, the, the similar ISV experience, me and you. Uh, I work for a company uh, that was primarily, uh, the, 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 they have a, they develop a software for M365 management, administration, governance. Governance is a huge uh, topic for me. I, uh, let's say, go back to the basics. That's my, um, governance is, everyone is my motto, okay? I always preach about the importance uh, how how to even establish the governance plans, what are the steps, what governance in M365, that's my thing. But I also am, uh, let's say, uh, passionate about teams. So that's the that's the service that uh, it's the closest to my heart. Of course, you know, with Teams comes SharePoint, but it's like a, not, I can't say that I'm an expert of SharePoint, but I have to know enough, let's say, to, mm -hmm. to know Teams. So um, yeah, that's pretty much it, I would say. <laughs> Yeah, it's it's uh, it's it's funny too how that evolves. Like we're both M three six five MV MVPs. Um, my focus areas are SharePoint teams. Um, but again, I was on a, a call earlier today around Viva Engage, formerly Yammer. I mean, I, the social technology that side of it. Um, I occasionally drop in when there's a uh, a OneDrive call. Also, the OneNote calls I'm on. Like so, like kind of all the collaborative mm -hmm. apps. Um, uh, very excited about. I'm also a like an, in the Viva category. Some of the Viva products are very passionate about. In fact, I'll be talking to ESPC about uh, Viva Pulse, uh, for example. Um, I'm very yeah, gutted. I'm not going this year, but I'm very gutted uh, about it. I had planned. Oh, come on, come uh, on. <laughs> yeah. But uh, you know, no, it's it's it's. I mean, obviously, as that evolves and changes, but the core of of what we do kind of remains the same. We're going to go and find and solve those customer problems. And I'm also governance is number one. It's the main thing I write about, talk about like that side of it, um, mm -hmm. which, you know, started back in the mid nineties uh, yeah. when I was doing it governance and building a governance body and, and kind of mm -hmm. the advisor for but, that and guiding that. Yeah. But um, I recently also had a, um... It was an idea for a series of YouTube videos, but we actually did a session for Teams Nation with Marin Sommers. I don't know, uh, you know Marin, right? Of course. So we did like a yeah. session about. Um, it was about CIS benchmark, like you know the, the and 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 governance and CIS benchmark and and Teams. I, I don't remember, remember the abstract now, but anyway, you like you know it's twenty twenty four. People still don't know these things, and you, and it's so important. It's like to go back to these topics base basics help people understand the, the background where does it come from how like why is it so important where are we going with this like that's what i say it's, old, it's, no? <laughs> it's the core principles it's, it's funny i mean it, it's i think so many people i mean you hear the phrase now you know co-pilot readiness what does it actually mean governance, <laughs> governance uh, exactly. it's it's the same things that we've been telling people to do with their content to uh, get organized uh, again okay. back in my the beginning of my information management you know, systems career in the nineties was, were the same principles. They all still apply. Obviously the technology is a little bit different, but all still apply. But I always like to ask, we got a couple minutes left. I do like to ask because, you know, even though you've been, uh, you know, an MVP for, you know, uh, so long, <laughs> um, you're you, inevitably, you're going to get questions. You may have already received a couple people reaching out saying, you know, how did you become an MVP? Like, what can I do to become an MVP? What's your guidance for somebody that might be interested? Uh, I know there is uh, there is tons of questions online about it. I know that people are doing sessions on this topic, and um, I'm not gonna lie. I don't feel like particularly. Oh, I'm an MVP since a week. I should be talking about it. I don't know if it's a correct. Yeah, way, give it but, another uh, week. That's right. Give it maybe like another week. Um, <laughs> I was never trying to be an MVP. 
um, I networked a lot with a lot of people and started helping without being even prompted. As, I mean, there is a fine balance here, but you know, I was just started to share whatever I know to help people. I remember vividly when I was, um, it was the same as ESPC that I met my current, uh, uh, let's say, co-founder. Um, I, there was an Ask the Expert stand, and it was Microsoft Teams Ask the Expert stand. I was not an MVP. I had not, I, 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 you know, I was just a random person there. But there were questions, and I was like, I couldn't help but overheard. I helped answer, you know, started mm -hmm. talking to people, introducing, hey, and suddenly, you know, one thing led to another, another then, you know, uh, Jeff Tieper, then, you know, Caruana got, I don't know, it just like blew out just because yeah. I was open to share the, the knowledge that I have and the, the passion and that's it. So networking for sure, <laughs> uh, but not to be pushy, like network because you want to share or exchange ideas or collaborate or, or, you know, that kind of networking, not like, oh, I want to be MVP so bad, like I have to make you, <laughs> that's a different story. Um, so that's, that's number one, in my opinion, no? That's that's yeah, number no, one. Completely agree. I, I think that there's uh and so my you know, good friend Sharon Weaver and I run a monthly uh, uh, a group where we uh, advise people that are interested in becoming an MVP. So we just sit and have a conversation. And these yeah. are uh, you know people that are all different stages yeah. of their career. Uh, and and we answer their questions, give them advice. But the number one thing. So we've had a couple of people that have participated in this. We've been doing it for about a year and a half. That have just said, you know, it's really not for me. Like they thought it was one thing. They thought it was more like a technical certification. Aww. They're like, no, there's, because if, if you're not interested in the community aspect, the sharing, like it doesn't like fit your profile to go and do it, or yeah. you're, you're there's having so... to do net new work to, to yeah. it's like a lot of effort to, to it is. become an MVP. It, it is, but it comes naturally if you really want right. to, if it, so there is many, so there's activities that count, but there is not just one activity that counts. It's not just posting blogs. It's not just speaking. And like not everybody is comfortable with public speaking. Maybe you are comfortable in responding to community um, uh, on, online, right? Like uh, writing responses to questions, or maybe you're just interested in mentorship. That also counts. Um, if you have a startup experience, maybe you want to help with the Microsoft for startups. We just talked about it before as well. That also counts as activity. So there are so many different ways that you can contribute to, um, uh, to, to make sure that, you know, people and businesses take advantage of the modern technologies in the best way possible. Um, I think that's the bottom line here now. So um, there is a lot of misconception, but uh, people like you, like Sharon, uh, help <laughs> overcome that. So um, thank you for, for your work, no? <laughs> yeah, it's it's a, uh, well, it, again, there's no, there's no uh, uh, repeatable model. There are things that you can yeah. do. There's good behaviors that you can model to, to go and do, but, um, it's a it's it's funny i know a couple people who were trying so hard to do all the things and they finally um like gave up they just said you know it doesn't matter like i'm enjoying mm -hmm. what i'm doing i'm getting benefits out of all the interaction and then they became MVPs. Yeah. it's like so having some level of humility i mean that's that's part of it um because the people in the microsoft people too they know that there there are people that are out there that are I wouldn't say trying to manipulate the the contributions into them but the microsoft people recognize when it's authentic when yeah. hey this is somebody who would be really good inside the program and it's just a it's kind of the next step of what they're already doing um so you it has to be natural it has to be authentic I, uh, otherwise if you, if you want to be an expert in go get yeah. the certifications and be yeah. an expert i i can tell you so so i don't know how many minutes we have left i can tell you that um this actually was my third nomination that I um, got awarded. And um, there's two things that happened before. First nomination I got, it was at the very, very beginning of my community kind of like present. I can't even say work because that was like not, not, not even like a conscious effort of, of community work, you know? Right. Um, and you know what I did? It's something so silly. I did not accept it. I did not accept it because I was like, I am, this is like way out of my league. Like, I'm not gonna like, what? Like, this is just such an abstract idea to, to me. Um, and now from the perspective, I would say, don't do that. Don't follow me on this. <laughs> Always say yes to opportunities. Okay. Uh, so like, if you're presented with opportunities, if, if you have that, um, 
there there is going to be commu other community people that were going to are going to tell you like i i think you should be part of this program i think you're doing great i think you know i want to nominate you just do it just go for it and then you know there's other processes in place and teams in place at microsoft that will validate your work and as you said if this work is authentic um that's going to come out sooner or later and you're going to get that award that's that's as simple as it yep i guess yep. the way we can explain it <laughs> and, and again if you don't receive the award but you're doing all those things like you're still benefiting you're still learning and growing and helping other people For sure. it's all positive anyway so like what's yeah what's the harm you know yeah either way yeah so, yeah yeah well, Cass, I really appreciate you taking the time and it's sad that I'm not going to see you in Stockholm this year, but for oh, folks so that want to get in touch with you, reach out. Where are you the most social? Where can the people find um, you online? Sure. So I might not be as flashy and as uh, loud yet. I don't know. We'll see. <laughs> LinkedIn probably is a good start. So Cass Novitska, of course, LinkedIn. And I also have uh, my own website, Um, Sometimes also Twitter, uh, former X, sorry. Yeah. From our Twitter, yeah. I still have not uh, <laughs> transitioned. I've not made the transition um, either. Yeah. So these are these are the the, the go tos. Um, I would say. Excellent. Well, we'll have of course the links out on the blog post and out on YouTube, so people will be able to find that and hopefully reach out and connect. And I always like to say, like, if you're going to connect via LinkedIn, please do, but leave a note as well. Like, hey, I saw your interview, or I I saw you present. Like, it's always good to have the note have the cv Absolutely. on the front of the resume folks come on <laughs> but, uh, well yeah so much it's great connecting with you thank you so much for invitation thank you a pleasure wow.